Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Hiba Fatima and welcome to another episode of Aura's In Conversation series. We are here to talk about a very important aspect of student life, examination. It is during this time of the year that you get to see a lot of sessions being organized for students on how to ace your exams, remaining stress-free and many other sessions. But we also understand that it is not just the student that affects their performance but other external factors as well. To help us better understand this, we have with us Mrs. Kanis Fatima. I welcome you, ma'am. Thank you so much. So, our guest here is a certified parenting coach who has been active in training teens and parents in their, you know, to overcome their hurdles. She is a career strategist and also has experience in the education sector as a principal and lecturer. Our guest is also the founder of Do a Success, where she undertakes her training sessions. It truly is an honor to have you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Hita. So, without further ado, let us uh, begin to understand the role of parents during examinations. But first, could you tell us, ma'am, why do you think this is even relevant? Why do we need to talk about this? Yeah, uh, initially I would like to highlight why exactly we need to do all these things. The main purpose is NCERT reports states that almost 80% of students are exam stressed. They have exam anxiety. Mm -hmm. and Nearly 45% of students are not respected the way they ought to be at home. Okay. So how serious and alarming state we are in right, right now, we need to understand this. It's mm -hmm. not just about their exams or the curriculum or the syllabus that matters. It's all about their external factors, as you said, about the parental issues as well. Even one of the reports uh, which states about the cortisol rates or the mental, the uh, challenges that right now pa children have, uh, are facing. The main problem here is there is a chemical called cortisol which is released when there is stress. Okay. And uh, experts say that parents are responsible for this. So okay. we need to understand that it's all, you know, we, we should have that conducive environment and we should have certain aspects from our end so that, you know, we can facilitate for better students and their, you know, their uh, academics or their well-being, mental right. well-being as well. So we understand that exams uh, usually give a lot of stress to students, right? So how can parents help to have this conducive environment at home, you know, to help their students study better? Yeah, that's a question actually which I need to highlight with every, every aspect of, you know, uh, our life. We need to think about this. The first thing is how we talk about exams at home. Mm -hmm. Whenever you have exams, the, uh, the parents start yelling, I mean the loud stress that we have mm -hmm. right now. So every house we can see people are talking aloud, the tone, the tone of the parent also is high. Where are you? Where is your book? Where are you? When are you going to sit and study? Why are so you not studying? Why are you not studying? Yes, <laughs> exactly. So these are all the questions with a high tone. Yeah. Okay. The tone itself. I even have seen, I've taught a counseling, a counseling session for a four-year-old child mm -hmm. where a mother comes and states that, uh, ma'am, I just want to tell you that my child is not disciplined. She doesn't take her books while, uh, uh, you know, uh, during the exams and she's least bothered about it. I was like, I thought she is maybe preparing for NEET. And then I asked her, what's the age? Okay. She said, four years, ma'am. I was like, oh my God. So four years also should know what exams is. I mean, she doesn't know what exams are exactly. exactly. I mean, that's the age where you bring that fear. Mm -hmm. Okay. So loud stress can steal the calmness of houses. So it's better you be very calm. First, initially that I want to tell you. The second thing is no critical comments regarding the past. Mm -hmm. Let them avoid that. I know what you've done in the last exams. You've seen your preparations. Mm -hmm. you know, in the last exam, you've scored this. You remember? So this is, these are all yeah. the dialogues that people have, you know, at home. So when you state these kinds of, um, you know, talks or that uh, dialogues at home, mm -hmm. you try to diminish their self-image. Yeah. The confidence but, also. Yeah, the goes confidence down. level, the confident level, their confidence also will, will be uh, diminished. So this is what we have to understand. So no critical remarks has to be done regarding their past performance, and at the same time, make sure that you don't hover over their 
environment or you know like hovering like a like an aeroplane or like a helicopter yeah, and give all them the space time. did you do this where is it why did you get up now why did you you know why are you sleeping now so it's all the time talking over, over like hovering over that particular student yeah okay. it seems like there's a lot of control on them hmm. and they are not able to do things by themselves like they might have their own schedule and all of that exactly. you know, makes sense exactly that that is going to bring a lot of stress in mm-hmm. a child's mind and then again as i told about um, the exams do not try to over discuss about the exams or about after the exams like post exam they come home how was it how was the paper what have you written here no, trying to give a lot of the do's and the don'ts like the checklist you know yeah that should never be there mm-hmm. and this is because see all these are again i'll tell you these are the reasons why we get high hot cortisol rates in children mm. so cortisol is nothing but a small chemical which is released okay during the time of happiness you get oxytocin or dopamine and then you have something called cortisol mm. so oxytocin is like an oxygen to the body okay but cortisol is something it's it's a negative ke- chemical that is released so we need to okay. understand that when you the more cortisol rates are released in the body higher the chances of stress and anxiety are seen in children mm. so that is far better we have to understand and analyze where am i going wrong mm-hmm. whether i am creating the stress or anxiety in my children am am i responsible for this yeah. this we need to understand because i'm sure parents do not want to put such a negative effect on children if Absolutely. they know about it that's so, all unintentional i know yeah. that but but this happens Yeah, because as you said unintentional they do not know about the effects or maybe they're not mindful about their behavior towards their children exactly. because they are stressed themselves right even if their exams are going through uh, i mean their children are going through exams it feels like it's their own examination they are equally stressed yeah exactly so how, but but they also need to make sure that their children are studying right they can't just leave them by themselves so how do you think that parents can develop or you know help their sh- children develop that balance between study and you know other things in life yeah without being as you said hovering over without hovering over yeah. them yeah they because they get obsessed most of the time i understand the first thing is let them have a fixed routine mm-hmm. like initially it's not just during the time of exams you have to take care about their uh, you know their breakfast their timing schedules and all that every day it should have a fixed routine like waking up at what time at what time should the breakfast be ready what time they are supposed to sleep so this has to be a routine it's not just during the time of exams even during the time of exams you can just shift maybe half an hour you can delay in your sleep mm-hmm. or something but yeah. not otherwise you can't simply shift the entire routine mm-hmm. so make sure that the routine is fixed and at the same time again we have to also see that you declutter the the shelf or that particular study area where they are working mm-hmm. because this means a lot what happens is when you declutter your study area or the space it it's like decluttering your mind mm-hmm. it helps in reducing confusion yeah okay so the more you you facilitate all that to your child when the child is not going to do it obviously <laughs> when even the teenagers i know that we are not we don't uh, allow our children i mean they don't do it by themselves at least we can we can ask them in such a way that let us try to you know clean up this mess mm-hmm. i'll help you out shall we see what is important which one are the important topics that you want to learn today we'll keep it here tomorrow's whatever it is shall we keep it here so try to do it together mm-hmm. mutually when you try to do this i think there's a lot of benefits that you can get and at the same time i suggest parents to have a work table rather than a time table mm-hmm. okay. because what are the what are the works or the tasks that the child needs to do each day let mm-hmm. them have a work table and just maybe you can stick it somewhere maybe in the notice board or somewhere whatever you feel like so you should have a work table and ask them to tick or you can tick it by yourself whatever the task they have completed let them do it so once it is placed right in front of right in front of them they are able to understand that these are the things that i have to do within this day the, mm. within the entire day okay. okay so it is not time bound it is task based task bound 
you have to do it in that way because that gives a lot i mean uh, it's it is told that nearly 12 to 14 percent of you know productivity is increased when you do the work table rather than the timetable mm -hmm. okay so that is better i feel okay and uh, also parents should know about pomodoro technique okay mm -hmm. a pomodoro technique is used for time management okay it is uh, an Italian word which uh, which means tomato. Okay. So the person who introduced this was, uh, he had a time piece, maybe like a tomato. Mm -hmm. And he used to work with this time timer almost for 20 minutes he used to work. And he used to take rest for 5 minutes. Mm -hmm. Again, 20 minutes. So this kind of, you know, the Pomodoro used to ring 4 times. And once you get that 4th, um, role uh -huh. or the fourth uh, stage, he will be taking a longer, longer break. leave or break for almost thirty minutes. Okay. Okay, and that thirty minutes, although that five minutes, whatever short breaks or the long breaks, make sure that no screen is available to the child. Mm -hmm. So apart from the screen, anything she can do or he can do, he can lie down, he can sleep, he can take rest, he can just close his eyes or make some exercises using his eyes. You know, he can turn around his eyeball and do some exercise brain exercises also he can do some brain gym exercises anything for that matter he can do mm -hmm. but see that screens are not available and he can just have a nature walk come up with maybe he can wash his eyes and face and you know that's how he needs to do so this is pomodoro technique mm -hmm. usually it is told that nearly 20 percent of the exam fear is you because of the time management so once you take care that your time is managed well you you know that what are the uh, topics and how much you have to you know se select the topic or whatever you, whatever you wanted to um, study in a day yeah you know. so those things you have to make sure that it is you have a fixed time mm -hmm. and based on that time you can work on it right so if if by 20 by 20 minutes if you're not able to do it Take another 5 to 10 minutes. Make sure you do it. Mm -hmm. And after that, you take a small break. So mm -hmm. once you take that break, again, that is uh, important. Your, your mind starts to rewire mm -hmm. whatever is learned. Mm -hmm. So that 5 minutes is actually not a break. The subconscious is trying to rewire. Yeah, it's for your brain to yes. absorb things and retain it in your yes. memory. Exactly. Right. You also mentioned the way in which parents talk to their kids. Right? They have a high tone and... I'm sure it is not intentional, but what are the ways? One more is there. Yeah, 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 sure. Adlema. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Another major thing that I want to tell you is do not compare the schedules of others. Parents usually do this. Mm. Okay. What, what they have is, okay, you see this auntie's daughter, <laughs> she's, she's, she's got this much of work task to do. What is yours? How many you have completed? What is it? So don't don't compare the schedules and the tasks of somebody else. Your child is born with some interests and he has his own capacities and capabilities. So make sure that is not done. Okay, okay. this is very important for all the parents. Comparison usually hurts kids a lot because they feel like their parents are not focusing on them but on their, you know, other children more than them. That is how it affects them. So you also mentioned about communication and how uh, parents talk to their kids unintentionally, unten unintentionally, you know, high tone and all of that. So how do you think they can have that, you know, bridge that gap in communication so that the students or the children are able to voice out their, uh, you know, uh, problems regarding academics or studies if they're having any difficulties? Because usually when they feel like the parents are not approachable, they don't tell them. So how do you do that? How do you bridge that gap? I'll tell you a case study, Hima. Uh, recently, it so happened that grade 10 child, mm -hmm. a girl, abruptly stopped going to school. Okay. So she was good in studies. She had, I mean, she was a distinction student, in fact. Mm -hmm. And just stopped going to school. And uh, there were all the efforts done by the school. The principal went to her house and started inviting her. I mean, we are not going to do anything. I don't know what's wrong with the issues or what. They were not able to analyze anything. And then later on, they somehow they consulted a psychologist. 
there they found out that the parent used to tell these kinds of dialogues like you know you know what has happened to your brother he has flunked on his exams in 10th standard because he was not working hard so if you do not work hard your condition is also going to be the same mm-hmm. now just imagine unintentional that was i i totally agree that parents are trying to motivate but it has become somewhere like a backlash and it 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 turns out to be something in the negative form now this creates a lot of stress in the child mm-hmm. the child the child's mind is not willing to face that challenge he wants to avoid that so this is the reason the child didn't want to go to school and after mm-hmm. that she had some medication after almost nearly 14 to 15 days of therapy she was able to attend the classes again so mm-hmm. resuming the classes was not easy for the child of because course. she had lot of pressure just because see the child is absolutely fine when she's scoring better why what was the necessity there that the parent has to talk about all these things right so there's no need of such thing so our talks matter a lot mm-hmm. our words matter a lot the first thing is let us be mild let us try to understand that our tone our body language is something that communicates more than our words mm-hmm. so it's just 7% of words that constitute a communication 55% is our body language mm-hmm. 38% is a tone right so our all together you know even if you even if you tell them with a lower tone you you talk to them about even the negative impacts also it's not going to hurt them so much but the, the higher the tone is the body language also with big big eyes you know you <laughs> you just try to scare people around with your body language it's trying to create a lot of impact there and mm-hmm. then as i told it's about the past negative experiences mm mm-hmm. once you talk about the past negative experiences i told you the the self image of the child is reduced the child is not able to think anything positive about himself rather if you talk about the past success you mm. know how you have done on this stage you were able to speak for so long you know what you have done last time that was a wonderful experience that we were able to find out that you could do these things so try to try to hunt for the positive things whatever the child has rather than focusing on the weaknesses mm. so that's far better i feel exactly and uh, also make them make, try to enhance their confidence confidence level is something that is you know maybe because confidence level is shattered mainly because of the lack of preparation mm-hmm. or the lack of communication all right okay the intrinsic motivation is lost mm-hmm. when there is no communication and what kind of communication people expect children expect communication is exchanging of thoughts and emotions not about what have you done mm-hmm. how was your exam what did your friend write what did your mom say that's not communication mm-hmm. so we need to have that healthy environment we need to talk about these um the the emotions that comes out you know as when when you're answering the paper how you feel about it hmm. these things matter a lot and that has to be communicated right. how i used to feel when i used to write exams communicate that to your child of course even we as parents we too had stress and we were also having the same kind of scenario now we are passing it on to our children the same thing we have to make sure that whatever i felt i can share it with my child oh. so that the child again in return tries to understand you know and he tries to come up that he is able to resonate okay my mama is like me yeah. i can go and share my feelings also then mm. okay without any i'm having any kind of prejudice or having any judgmental prejudgmental notion it's better we communicate another major thing that we have is we try to communicate the things that they should do in a way like you know in the negative statement for example the child is not studying we we tell the child why are you not studying mm-hmm. okay this is a question that we ask i mean what the child has to do is not communicated what the child is not doing is communicated yeah okay makes sense. so that that again is a matter we need to make sure what we expect from them that has to be told directly mm-hmm. i mean that primarily that that has that statement has to be mm-hmm. focused 
I want you to study rather than watching TV. Mm-hmm. So the primary statement is to study, and you emphasize more on that statement. Okay, the the mind is able to retain. The mind is able to capture that primary statement. So make sure that the communication when you when you be mindful about those words. What are you primarily expecting the child to do? Mm-hmm. That has to be focused first. The mind is able to grasp that. So yeah. better. You know, you, we usually do this. I mean, even even if it's a small child, child is jumping on the table. Mm-hmm. We tell, "Hey, why are you jumping on the table? Come down." No, this is the secondary statement we tell them to come down. Come down, yeah. Okay, the secondary statement, which is which actually we want them to, ex- we are expecting something from them that this has to be replaced, with, and we have to change the statement. Yeah. The primary statement, of the statement. Yes, the primary statement should be something that we are expecting the child to do. That okay. has to come first, so that the child is able to grasp things mm-hmm. easily. This is about the communication that we all have to practice, and I'm sure if you are mindful about it, mm-hmm. we can bring that changes there. Yeah, because a lot of conversation happens without you thinking about it, because homes or houses are our safe space, and you do not think twice about talking over there. So yeah, it makes sense. We are also programmed in need. the same way. Exactly. Yeah, all you need to do is be a little more careful and aware of what you're talking and how you're talking to them. Absolutely. But, uh, ma'am, I would also like to point out that parents do have expectations, right? But it's just the way that they're putting it onto their or projecting their expectations to kids that are different. So, how do you think that they can let the kids know of their expectations without being overbearing to them, but also being mindful of their well-being, like projecting their expectations while also being careful that their kids are not do not feel overwhelmed by them? It depends on the age group of the child. Mm-hmm. The first thing, it's about now. For example, if the child is a toddler or mm-hmm. maybe a preschooler, you can't you can't impose your expectations like that. The mm-hmm. child is not able to understand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't want you to get B grade. All those things, the child is not able to focus. What B grade is all about? Mm-hmm. Doesn't know about it. Okay. But I have come across parents who are. I don't know the sky high expectations that they have, which are gen, which are not genuine. Mm-hmm. I recently had a, a a student who came to me, and uh, his mother started telling me, "I want my son to become a CEO of one particular company." So I was like, "Why particularly you want this <laughs> person to be in this company, or why is that he wants he, you want him to be as a CEO?" Now I was not able to do it. That's the reason I want him to do, and it took me almost thirty to forty minutes to convince her to make her realize that now the feelings that she has towards her father for not letting her do that work, the same feeling even your child is going to have when you are not letting the child live his own dreams. He is not to live your dreams. Yeah. Children are not here to live up to their parents' life. They have their own dreams. They have their own interests, and most important, they have their own skills. Mm-hmm. They have their own weaknesses. Now, this is something again a weird expectation that parents have that my 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 son should be this son this this or this you know one of the two. Like either I I don't say right now even children are not interested to become um, you know uh, doctors and engineers. When I had been to Uh, career counseling sessions in a few schools and colleges. This, uh, I would say, the most prominent schools also don't want children to have. You know, they don't want to become lawyers. They don't want to become. You know, I don't know why these children are not interested to become doctors, also engineers, also this. And we don't want to become. Okay, then what? After this, then what else? When I gave them all the options about new age careers and all that. Later on, they said, "Ma'am, it's not it's not possible for us to go and convince our parents about this mm-hmm. because parents are not understanding all these things. Their expectations are very high. My child should be on the top. I mean, everybody on the top is not possible. Mm-hmm. Okay, so firstly, parents should analyze." Whether I have a genuine expectation from my child or not, whether my child is able to do this or not, he has certain uh, weaknesses. 
and certain strengths so let us work on that strength let us understand where what fits him the best okay where he mm-hmm. is fitting in that has to be analyzed but usually what happens is okay he is good he is not good at math ma'am i somehow should see that he will be scoring 99 in math it's not possible i mean that's not the genuine expectation also so we need to understand this cannot happen i mean that there is some barrier mm-hmm. which can that is a challenge we have to overcome that through some other sources make sure that the child is able to do far better in rest of the subjects rather than curbing curbing his particular um, you know his uh, uh, confidence level there saying that okay you are not good at math you have to work on math rather than all other subjects where he is good at mm-hmm. then why not talk about those things and mm-hmm. talk about those expectations there mm-hmm. that's more important so make sure that his efforts are appreciated expectations when you, when we have children also have their own expectations yeah so make sure that you you try to appreciate their efforts make them understand that you are encouraging them you are trying to emphasize or you are again giving significance to all that little efforts that they are trying yeah. to do and give them some milestones give them some milestones so this is okay it's okay if you take 50 this time mm-hmm. it's okay if you take 45 this time it's all right wow that's wonderful you have done this so something like this has to be done mm-hmm. okay you keep one expectation that the child should achieve 60 but uh, the child has reached 50 i mean far better than last time although but you say i was expecting that you know you will reach 60 but this is just 50 when you say that again the passive response of the parent leads the child to get demotivated it doesn't feel like working hard mm. so the little efforts give them some some small small benchmarks and some small little goals so that they can achieve and celebrate it mm. celebrate that goal so yes you have done this no mashallah that's wonderful try to talk about this mm. it motivates them to work exactly, better exactly that intrinsic time. motivation they get you know yeah. they feel like working like even harder. if they do not realize it they know that their parent is going to be happy if they do better next time and they were not upset that i didn't reach their expectations this time yes. i think that affects as well so but uh, we usually see that even if the parents are not very you know overpowering or overbearing they have that anxiety and stress within themselves that the environment has put in them about exams i mean i feel it is pretty natural that students have that that stress and anxiety about examinations like especially board exams so uh, how do you think parents can identify that about their kids and help them or support them like so that it does not exceed the average or minimum or the regular amount yeah the symptoms are to be highlighted initially because you know most parents are not aware of as you said like uh, parents come to us after things are out of control okay so one day i got a call from a parent um that somewhere around uh, maybe the child was in his teens and i got a call saying that uh, ma'am the door is locked nobody is there and uh, i don't know what to do with my son i said i'm helpless i'm, I'm sorry right now you you can't call me at this time because it's not about me taking action you need to you need to maybe either consult a police because at that point of time the parent hardly knew what the child was going through this is the alarming state again so the symptoms are to be known initially later we understood the same child was having problems from his almost for the past 3 years he's been into the stress exam stress only i mean it so exam was a kind of stress for the past 3 years and parents were not aware of it the first thing physical symptoms let us understand you have perspirations you know the mm-hmm. child starts sweating during the time of exams the hands the palm the legs all these you know they 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 sweat okay so when you have intense sweating or perspiration it's a sign again the palpitations the heart beats okay hmm. and uh, if you have noticed when we were also young we had headaches and stomach pains yeah every now and then you know oh, i don't know mama my head is aching my stomach is aching so these are the two things that we usually have but if it's genuine then it is a sign of anxiety again and then you also have fatigue 
fatigue is you know even after you have your sleep you have sound sleep the moment you get up from your sleep also you feel tired hmm not feel rested says, no i don't feel like going mama my whole body is aching and all that things that fatigue is there is again tired that means that it is a sign of i mean it's a symptom that we need to take care about and then you have emotional symptoms like you have you know uh, mood swings mm-hmm. irregular mood swings very often it changes then there is some issue i mean during the time of exams you can see this I mean, when you whenever you have your exams approaching uh, you are just gearing up for your exams and then you see these kinds of mood swings that means it's a sign of again and the anxiety, anxiety. stress yes and um, some of them are not able to sleep at all mm-hmm. some are restless yeah again this is emotional state sometimes mm-hmm. even bed wetting Mm-hmm. can be seen in children even the 12th standard child also has bedwetting because of exams so make sure that if you have these symptoms it's better to take action immediately certain things are to be told to the child make sure that marks are not the i mean marks are not everything in life yeah. so make sure that you give them significance over the do a set efforts and then you have some behavioral symptoms as well sometimes they are not interested to do the things that they were interested in mm-hmm. for example maybe they were interested in reading comics during the time of exams they just leave it aside I mean, there's no there's no harm in reading comics even during the time of exams it's okay but if you feel that things that are actually they are interested in and they don't want to talk about it they don't want to work on it that means there is some issue and uh, again if there is procrastination of the work in case they are trying to get the things delayed mm-hmm. then mama maths i'll do it later if you see this we have a pattern in most of the students i have i've seen math and physics or chemistry when it comes to um, the reactions and all that when, when they have to the derivation and all that when they do mama that's will do it later <laughs> tomorrow mama i'm going to study tomorrow i, I will be doing it yeah, this definitely. is what they do <laughs> okay and then they keep themselves isolated that's another case if they feel that they don't want to socialize they don't want to stand with uh, you know uh, come up with family members or meet any other family member or their neighbors they don't want to play they don't want to socialize getting themselves isolated in one room mm-hmm. this is the sign of stress again so parents should be taking care of these things my new things i understand but before it gets to the adverse situation yeah, before it gets out of hand they need to learn to recognize these things exactly. so and we're all learners <laughs> so uh, but experiences will teach us will teach us and information like these of course but uh, do you think there are any common mistakes that parents make when they are thinking that actually helping or supporting the kid but they are actually mistakes or you know that could be problematic for the child in the long run are there any yeah, common things like that yeah that's what i have highlighted the same as i said excessive pressure excessive pressure and they yeah, are overbearing yes their overbearing projections. also it's like you know you are you try to give you try to focus on your expectations mm-hmm. and then you think that okay my child can do this mm-hmm. which is not genuine if it's genuine yes you can motivate the child you bring that confidence you bring him take him into confidence and then you do that it's all right but otherwise you are just trying to harm that child's mm-hmm. confidence and this the inner self image okay. so i usually tell this to my uh, parents also and uh, my teenagers whenever i have this training sessions um the level of success depends on the size of your self image mm-hmm. the more the better you have your self image you know what your image is going to be where you will lie up, lie as a as a successful person where you will be headed up to that is more important and the more the, the success level also depends on this whatever image you have about yourself what mm-hmm. you are yeah then what you be you know in the future what i'm going to be i will not be able to do it you know personally even i had that particular feeling i'll tell you when i was young i was told 
by my family members, my parents, my relatives that I am an absent-minded person. Okay, I am an absent-minded. She doesn't understand what is, you know, anything that is happening happening in and around her. She's not able to. She's not aware of it at all. And this made me skeptical to learn driving anything I do. Okay. Okay. How can a person like me do it? I mean, I was having that self limitations, you know, mm. that limiting beliefs that I had. Rejecting yourself. I was doubting myself. That self doubt appeared only after these kinds of statements that I started believing in. Yeah. I had to come out of it. I had to work on myself. It's my personal experience that I want to share with you. Mm-hmm. This has happened, and this has happened with most of us. Yeah. We have at least one or two statements told by our parents or elders in one way or the other, which is there. It sticks I'll tell you a us. case study again. Okay. A child whose father expired. He had come to us saying that, you know, there is, I, I was again very good in studies. During my schooling, I have done all my academics, my, my papers were very well done. But I am not able to find success. Now no promotions are there, nothing is there in my life. I don't know why I ruined my life. So after a long therapy, we understood that the main reason was he had overheard his father talking to somebody that my child will never succeed. I mean, that was the statement that he overheard. Now, the father is no longer there to come and ask. I mean, we are not able to go and communicate this to the father, right? But that statement was there in the mind. And that was again the hindrance. That was stopping him from succeeding. And after maybe four to five you know, sessions, he was able to cope up with it. So the moment you talk, you know, the negative statements that we give to our child, you are very weak in science. Mm-hmm. You need to work hard. You are weak in science. You cannot do it. Mm-hmm. You know, when you say that, it becomes... And it's, it's most often that the parents or anybody else, they don't even remember that they had told that. They had given such a statement. They say, really? When did I? I didn't do that. But... The kids remember yeah. for a really long time, as you mm. mentioned. And parents focus more on grades than the emotional well-being, which mm-hmm. is again, I mean, that's again, you know, harnessing the growth and the development. The holistic development of the child is the emotional well-being, mm-hmm. right? When you have that psychological background where, where you don't have that particular... Mm. And uh, another major problem that we have is we don't expect, we don't tell our expectations to our children the way we need to tell them. Like... Exactly, we need to we need to negotiate. We need to come to the common terms. What is my expectation and what is your expectation? So we mm-hmm. need to have that open communication. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's all right. What the parent is expecting need not be the same expectations the child may not have. Mm-hmm. The child may have certain expectations the parent is not at all aware of. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So this has to be done. Open communication and these unrealistic expectations we just have to avoid this as parents we are matured enough mm. we know how to regulate because our brains are developed rather than our children's brain children you know at least up to the age of 24 the brain is not fully developed the child is not able to understand and decide and when they are not able to regulate and communicate well mm. we expect them to do it rather we are not able to do this on the other it's, it's an irony i would call it so this is again the major task. No, these are all the silly mistakes I would say, but again, they bring drastic changes. This has to be, we, we have to make people aware of this, make our parents aware of these things. And it's also about empathy because you as adults have been in the kid's place and you kind of know if you think about it, how they might be feeling or what effect it might have on the kid. But yeah, it's all about empathizing at some yeah, point. Putting yourself in the shoes is the matter. But what happens is, I know, I have also experienced the same <laughs> yeah, thing. This that's comes, how the conversation comes, comes up. It should be the other way around. It should yes. help them understand. I know, when well, I was a child when I did it, now you also do it. <laughs> same thing, you're trying to pass it on to them. Yeah, the way in which it is communicated is entirely so, different. But uh, we also see that it's not just parents, right? There are teachers in the picture as well. And now you see school counselors being there as well, right? So how do you think these 
parents, teachers or counsellors or all of these figures that the child looks up to can, you know, cooperate together and help the kid in a positive manner. Yeah, um, that's a very good question, Hiba, because see, I'll tell you, collaboration, mm -hmm. when all the three dimensions have to work together. Yeah. Like, otherwise, what happens is we are just focusing on students, both are blaming the student. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is always, uh, I would say, targeted. His child is always targeted, both the sides. Now, this should not happen. We need, as parents, first thing is, we have already done this mistake. We have outsourced the education to teachers itself. We have given that particular notion that I am not anything regarding studies and education matter. You need not come to me. You can either go to your teacher or to your tuition teacher. The child, typically, you know, like he understands that my mama is ignorant about all this. Mm -hmm. I need not talk about my academics and my studies to my mama and my papa because they are ignorant. They are not bothered about it. They don't want, they only want marks. Mm -hmm. What education is all about, we don't know. So the first thing is, we need to take the responsibility. I get parents who come to me saying that my child is a slow learner and a slow writer. Mm -hmm. My my child doesn't know to write. <laughs> now, I tell them, so what have you done to do this? I don't know, ma'am. I told my pair, a teacher, because I have told you, do whatever you want to get this completed. Homework should be completed. You do whatever you want. So I, did, I, I just asked, what have you done as a parent to complete this homework? I used to hit him, ma'am, so much. I mean, that's the only way we have. Hitting is never, it's, it's never shown any, any positive results. Okay, carrot and stick will never give that positive results. It was during our times that has happened. Now, it's not. The appreciation needs to be highlighted. So, take that responsibility. My child, I have to take the responsibility and collaborate with the teacher. Ask the teacher, what are the methodology that I can imbibe, I can see to it, that I can do it along with you. Mm -hmm. So make sure it is happening from both the sides and without any blame game. More important is not to blame the child, rather appreciate the child whenever he is doing something good. Even if he is writing a word, start appreciating. Mashallah, so nice, you have written this word, I am very happy. I mean, instead of uh, appreciating the being, you need to appreciate the task what the child is doing. And once you do that, the child feels like repeating that process again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it should be on both the sides, parent also and teacher also. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it should be a collaboration and also facilitate the modern texts and the apps. Most of the parents are not showing them the videos. Sometimes, you know, it may be the child, maybe he is an auditory person or a visual person, a visual learner or an auditory learner. So he needs more of audios and videos and the, the, the stuffs like this to study. And that can, it can help them to retain their memory and that, you know, that concept is able to, they are able to understand in a better way. So make sure that these videos or apps are used. Mm -hmm. Even if it is for a teenager, even if it is a 13 year old or a 14 year old child, he can retain better. Try to do that. Mm -hmm. And ask for effective methodologies and effective remedies. Like sometimes, you know, parents come to us only when the things are out of control and some remedies which we tell them also they high, they high chances are they don't uh, try to implement that in their lives okay. so that becomes a problem see i got a case where the child was not able to read i asked the child and i gave some techniques to the parents saying that these are some of the techniques because this is usually done with the mind Okay, and mind training when we do these small things, what is happening is the child is not able to retain the image and that is a problem that the child cannot read properly. The child had herself built a, a wrong notion about herself that I, I don't know phonics. 
So who told you about this? I asked. The mother said. Even the teacher was telling mother that. Mm-hmm. Mama was telling. The teacher also was telling that I don't know phonics. Mm-hmm. So when I made her read, mashallah, she was able to read that. The entire only one word she was not able to read, and that was obvious. I mean, uh, some some bigger word. How old was the child? The child was in sixth second standard. Okay. Okay. She was around uh, uh, seven years of age, and. At, that was a, I, and within one month, child was supposed to come back. Mm-hmm. I told that you have to report me. This is a small game. I'll tell you to do this. The mama will facilitate. I had given okay. I have all that instructions. I had given to the mother that you have to do this. But no, I I tell you after te, after one month when I started, I told them to revert. No attention was given, ma'am. I couldn't do it. So if this is the case, it's highly impossible. Yeah. Consciously, we have to take efforts. So thank you so much, ma'am. We've had a lot of information. But lastly, I would like to uh, ask what you would like to give to the parents to motivate their children to study because in the end, it's about examinations over here, right? So what would you suggest that the parents do to motivate their kids and instill a sense of? Uh, Success or motivation, because as you mentioned, it's about intrinsic motivation, and no matter how much external pressure is there, it will only work on it if they have the internal motivation for it. So, how do you think that can be given Frankly by parents? Said, because this is the need of the hour right now. We need to have connection more than corrections. Mm-hmm. Connection should be there, basically, but which is missing right now. Mm-hmm. So, connect better than correct. So first thing is your connection, your bonding, because that oxytocin level has to be increased. Just like how we need oxygen in the body, we need to have this chemical called oxytocin, which brings us, you know, that that bond which brings us together. Mm-hmm. That is needed, which is missing right now. Cortisol is something mm-hmm. which is right now uh, mm-hmm. negatively to be at the peak, and that has impacted a lot. So first thing is corrections, and then. We need to again postpone the correction. Corrections can be done later. Mm-hmm. Connection needs to be built initially. Yeah, postpone your sense. correction, connection you build it and make it primary necessity. Second thing that I want to tell you is try to instill growth mindset in children. Okay. S- children, the moment you tell something to them, they take it in the negative form and some other actions we, we we have come across children getting maybe they run out run away or sometimes they commit suicide all these are children without growth mindset they are not trained in that way okay the more and more you you give them negative vibes you give them negative statements they don't feel like coming out they just feel like running away from that i mean the, mm. the mind is designed in that way our, our body is also designed you know we have that 3f Whenever you have any kind of fear, mm-hmm. the mind responds with three Fs. Either, either it is freeze, mm-hmm. fight, or flee. Yeah. So, one of the three will be responding to situation. So, this stimulation, what we give them, you know, it should be in such a way that it gives them like a, a, um, a growth mindset, which which we need to instill, make them think in the positive level, and. I want to make sure parents realize that they are the only biological parent they have for their children and which cannot be replaced. A parent cannot be replaced. Teachers can be replaced. Educational institutions can be replaced. A books or syllabus can be replaced with, but not parents. And another thing is children are not meant here to write the common exam. The common question paper. Your child has his own question paper in life that he has to answer. Prepare them for their life question paper rather than the common question paper which is there in the schools. Rightly said. That's what I want to highlight. I wish parents know about these things. Small, small things also, but it matters a lot. Mm-hmm. Small changes can create a lot of revolutionary ideas also. May Almighty bless. And help our parents in regulating their Definitely. emotions and bringing out these 
small values in them yeah the first step is the desire to learn more and correct ourselves and it is knowing and understanding that even if we are adults we are still learning and there are a lot of things that we do not know about so thank you so much ma'am for joining in with us talking about these things that were, that are really important in the in this current generation we are going to reward you for your efforts and may all of those who hear about this implement them as well so as mentioned earlier mrs kaniz is a certified coach so if you have any queries regarding any of those things that we've spoken about over here or anything other as well you can please get back to her on her social media contacts or her uh, phone number which will be included in the screen here thank you